and this is another day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I try to side and hurt the bone. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. O oh, gracious Father, we come approaching your throne of grace. Through your son Jesus, can we know no other way to come. First of all, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness, your mercy. Thank you for your goodness and your stretched out hand to deliver and let the captives go free, Lord. Lord, this morning we're praying for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding concerning your word. Help us, God. And we'll add that into your word. Help us, Lord, and we won't take anything away from your word. But God, we're right in the body by your spirit and God by your great power. We're asking Jesus' name. My God, my God, my God. We pray for that backslider, that sinner man, that woman, that child, that walk the street, no place to go, Lord. Give them a mind that want to be saved and a mind that want to stay saved and a place to live. We pray for the president, those who are thought of Republican, Democrats, Lord. Let it be peace in the White House, Lord. Let it be peace in our house. Those who are not saved in that White House will be saved. Those who are not saved in our house, oh God. Lord, that you're saving to the married, the born, and the hidden born. Call our seed in, Lord, from the north, south, east, and west, Lord. And bless God that they be saved and baptize them with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we ask, oh God. And God, we are thankful for it. My God, my God, my God. We pray for Israel, Lord. Let it be peace in Israel. Lord, have mercy, God. And all Israel will be saved. Over here, we stand with, the, with Israel, Lord. Don't care what they're saying about them. We stand with Israel. You say, we bless Israel, you bless us. We bless Israel with the fruit of our lips, Lord. So if you curse Israel, they're going to be cursed. Lord, have mercy, God. Your word ain't going to change. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen and amen. Thank God for a full house and can't get to the door. In Jesus' name, speak them things be not as though they were. I'm so glad I don't go by sight, but I go by faith. Go with me now. We got another, another subject. We got, oh, it's first of all, brother uh, John Barry, Lord. Amen. As he has to work today, Lord. Be with him, God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God. Touch his hand. Whenever he put his hands in it, you're blessed, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Brother Charles, Father, Lord, raise him up. Amen. For your honor and your glory, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord. God bless God. Be back in there working for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, behind the pulpit. And God, we're thank you for that. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen and Amen. We got another powerful subject. This is going to be part one. We might do part two. We're going to see because we've got a lot of groceries on this and to. Uh, we have to deal with it in marriage that's, and, and not, and uh, also the one that's not married. We have to deal with it. That's our subject with it today. Amen. That we have to deal with it. Let's find out what the Word of God says about marriage. You're going to be surprised. I think you're going to be surprised what Jesus said about it. Now, I know what Paul said, and I compare Paul's writing out of 1 Corinthians 7 chapter with Jesus Christ writing, and some things I don't follow, uh, amen, and call what Paul would say, amen, because it don't line up with Jesus said about marriage. Now, if anybody asks you, whose side I'm on, tell them for me, please. I did them on the Lord's side, and they ain't on nobody else's side. If the preacher on the Lord's side, I'm on his side. If he ain't, I'm not on his side. I'm going to stay on the Lord's side. I'm not this thing on that. I said, I don't know about it. people's feelings and emotions running everywhere about marriage. What then happened here and what then happened there. I go according to the word. What Jesus Christ says about it. That's what we want to learn today. Amen. Because we have to deal with it. We have to deal with marriage. Uh, with the word. That's how we deal with it. With the word of God. Come with me now to uh, Matthew 19 and 3. Matthew is the 19th chapter, the third verse, at page 1161. Page 1161. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, 
Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every call? Now, not, notice when you hear a verse said tempting him, and the scribe is very tempting him about how he's going to answer this question about marriage. Did Jesus Christ back down? He ain't back down on none of these questions. He asked the question according to the word. So, preacher, don't back down. Hey, man, I'm asking the question concerning marriage. Use Jesus as your example to answer any questions in the Bible. And the line up, go along with the apostles, the prophet, the priest. Lord, that person. Don't line up, kick them to the curb. Put them on the prowl here. Fourth part. And he, and he answered and, and said to them, Have you not read that he was made them at the beginning made them male and female. Y'all ain't read that? Now he knows that they read it. So he asked them a question. He asked them a question. You ain't never read that? Oh, that's what Give all the heck of a fellow. Uh, Mike Bowler here and how good to see him. He used to be early. I don't know. He, he'll pick back up again. We're going to put him on the what? We'll put him on the prowl list. And he'd be back. He'd be bouncing back. He'd be beat everybody else here. That's what it used to be. Amen. But, but, but God, but my God, page 1161, amen, Matthew, the 19th chapter, amen, that's God, uh, the Pharisee asked Jesus Christ about marriage. So our subject here, uh, we have to deal with it in marriage and the one that's not married. Uh, we want to deal with both sides. Amen. We, we ain't the one side preacher over here. That's uh, why well, we might have, a, have to have a part two. Fourth verse. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that which he had made, uh, made them in the beginning, made them male and female? That's in the beginning. That's in the book of Genesis. We get a chance, we'll go to that. We go to the book of Genesis. That's in the beginning. That's what he's dealing with. Amen. Uh, that the Lord said that. All right, let's go to that now. Let's go to that now. Just hold your finger there. Amen. And we're going to see what he's dealing with at the beginning. That, uh, yeah. That's, um, Lord, have mercy. As Genesis, uh, uh, the second chapter, the 24th verse. Genesis, the second chapter, the 24th verse. He talked about in the beginning. Give a lot of hands in the middle of the year and a half. Thank God, uh, amen. Let's go. So, uh, we, we we're on we're going to page three and a subject is uh, marriage. Marriage, that you got to deal with. We have to deal with the in marriage and the one that's not married. Amen. We've got to deal with, with the word. How are we going to deal with it? With the word. The seventh year, we have to deal with it in marriage and the one that's not married. With the what? <coughs> with the word. That's how we're going to deal with it. Well, we're going to deal with your We're going to deal with your feelings and emotions. How you feel. Uh, yeah, because I'd be running everywhere, but to the word. So I'm through, I'm through, I'm through dealing with feelings and emotions. I only deal with everything here in the Bible Center according to the word. Uh, so Genesis, amen, at page 3, uh, Genesis 2 and 24. Therefore, therefore shall man leave his father and his mother, shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So what makes it one flesh? Is that enough? Marriage. Marriage. When they have any courts. Huh? Yeah, but you become one. You want to see how to become one flesh. Become intimate. In the spirit. Uh, it is in the word. When you become intimate. Intimate, that's right. You gotta be all the jumps on it then. You gotta when you come in, you become one flesh. You become one flesh when you're intimate or when you are when what? Say it again? When you're in the same spirit with the Lord. Well, that's, that's something different. You're talking about, you're, are you all spirit? Me? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You all spirit? I can see. <laughs> you must be flesh too, sir. I can okay, see. You. Only, you're saying it's only in marriage that you become. Uh... Whenever you have sex, you become intimate with one another. 
that it become one flesh. That's the word. So what about the ones that not married? Well, that's what we got the flip side. All right, I got you. We got the what? <laughs> okay. You see, earlier I said that. That we got to have a flip side, and I don't know better get to that the one that's not married. Okay. Because you got to deal with that too. Because they're not married. They have to deal with it. With the what? What you going to deal with? With their feelings and emotions? All with the word. <laughs> I never thought to jump on that. You said the word. You can't deal with them with your feelings and emotions now. They run everywhere. You got to deal with it with the word. And the only way you're going to survive marriage is with the word of God. Amen. Your feelings and emotions go against the word. Let me say it again. Your feelings and emotions will go against the word of God. I know. I've dealt with it. And there were folks that got filled with emotion and it went against the world. When you're intimate, you, uh, you, 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 uh, you constellate the marriage. You what? Constellate the marriage. Yeah, well, but you have to use the word of God to do that. Marriage comes through the vows. Yeah, when, you, when, you stand, when you stand before the preacher, make a vow. Yeah. Now, that's a vow you're not supposed to break until after you, after the person is dead. Oh, we got some groceries here. I said, it's supposed to last until death do you part. Don't you all say that in your vows? I said it in the vow in case some of y'all didn't know y'all done said it. Yeah. But it's in the vow that y'all made before the Lord. I think I just made it before the preacher. Yeah. God gave you and he sees you. Well, it's like the ones that get married by the judge. As long as it's right. It doesn't make no difference. If you do get married by the judge, they, they give you a license, don't you? Don't, don't the judge give you a license? All right, so if you got a license, you got some papers now on your on your wife. Some people got. Let, let, let me say something. I got married by the judge, but then I turned around later on and got married in the church. That's good. That's good, dog. At least you got married and you got some papers. All right, some people got papers on the dog, ain't got no papers on the one they're shocking up with. That ain't that ain't of God. That's fornication. I have single people. Two single people living together. I'll tell you there's a flip side. There's a flip side of the side. They say after you've been after you've been shacking up for six months, you you become a law married. No such thing. That's the man talking, though. You talking like a man. What that word says. The word says marriage, bed and defiled. Marriage is when you go before and make an, a vow. That's a marriage. Make a vow that y'all are going to live forever until death do you part. How long? Until death do you part. How many people teach this like that? I teach the word. I'm not, I can't go along with what you've been taught wrong. Sometimes you're taught wrong. So here we're going to try to straighten it out with the word and teach it right. If you've been taught wrong. All right, get it, get it, man. That's the best. I can go, I can go forward now. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Amen. We're on the third uh, chapter. We're on page three, uh, Sister Kim, 2 and 24. That shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be what? So what makes one flesh, Sister Kim? <clears throat> huh? You know, come on, say it. Don't be shy to the kill. It's the sex. Make you want. Yeah. I know some people don't know that. But we're going to teach you exactly the way it is. That's why when you have sex with a person, and that person is not, and y'all not married, you commit fornication. Because that's what you have. Now, some folks tell me, they, well, I just live with them. I say, you never touch them. I, I say, y'all sleep in the same bed and y'all know. Look and see what got stupid on my head. 
Huh? Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Evil Don't let your good evil be spoken of. Yeah, your good evil be spoken of. Because that, that's going to speak the evil of you because you didn't do it God's way. Right. That's God's way, our way, and a devil way. Amen. Who way do you think going to win that? God's way going to win every time. So we got a way, the devil got a way, and God, so what we doing today is finding out God's way about marriage. Because we got to deal with it. Amen. Let's go back now to Matthew 19 chapter, page 1161. Page 1161. And that day we're dealing with marriage. Uh, we're dealing with it, and the one is not married. Uh, because you got some folks ain't married. I'm going to date if he ain't married. But he needs to know how to deal with marriage. Because right, he might get married. If you got knowledge of something before, it would help you better. Instead of getting into it, and then you didn't know. Amen. Now you're in trouble with who? Lord. In trouble with God. Not me. Ain't in trouble with me. That's between you and God. This ain't, this ain't real stuff here I'm getting. Uh, CNN don't know nothing about this. They don't know nothing about marriage. Fox, Channel 6, 12, 4 million, they don't know nothing about marriage. Hey, Amen. Y'all gonna get the real thing here. We're coming to the real. It's for real. We're gonna give you the word. What Jesus said about it. All right, let's go. Uh, and so we dealt with that fourth verse. That's why we went to Genesis. The, uh, the, the second chapter, the 24th verse, he picked that up. He said, and he answered and said to them, have you not read? You didn't read it? We just got to read it. Out of who? Out of the book of Genesis. Yeah. He, now, what's what he said? Uh, that he was read them in the, in, at the beginning. At the who? The <laughs> at the beginning. That's why we went to Genesis. That's the beginning. Lord, that verse is Jesus. Lord, that verse is uh, made them male and female in the fifth heart, and said, For this call shall a man leave his father and mother, shall cleave to his wife, and their twine shall be what? One flesh. I wonder why you got to leave your mother and father. And you got to take care of their wife, too. Well, yeah, because mother and father might be trying to run a marriage. I hope y'all get what I'm saying. I said the mother and father might be trying to run a marriage. And he told you to leave. I know some of y'all stay there with mom and dad and let mom and dad run the marriage. That's why the Lord told you to get away at it. Get on out of there. Because this marriage between you and your mate, it ain't between nobody else but you and your mate. Lord God, there's somebody, ain't. and how many people follow their destruction? They, they don't answer, and some of them do. Come here, they man, and sing for her. Wherefore, there are no more twine but one flesh, what therefore God had joined together, let what? No man, no man put a what? I said, you can't, you can't go to the church now. Talking about, well, you know, we know, we know she had I, two to two. Lord, have mercy, God. So they go before the judge and get unmarried. But the Lord said, don't let no man separate this. How many men? No man. Not even the man that's married. That's right. Or the woman. Not even the woman. Hey, get a lot of hands out, brother. Now see, you're in the sky, brother. Oh, now see, you're in the book of Matthew, brother. You showed up just in time. Amen. Bless God. Amen. We're on page 1161. Amen. Good to see you, brother. We're on page 1161. And we're dealing with uh, Lord, have mercy in marriage. Amen. Bless God. Uh, you, have, you, have, you have to deal with marrying the one that's not married. You have to deal with both sides of it. Uh, I said we're dealing on one side right now, the one that's married. Lord, have mercy, God. Um, we got something for her. They said unto Lord, have mercy. They said unto him, why did Moses? They command to give a written divorce and to put her away. Now, who they use it? Moses. I, I tell you, I just don't listen to Jesus. What's wrong with the preachers today? They got to go everywhere but to Jesus. They go to Paul. They 
go over here, they go over there. I want to find out what Jesus said about marriage. Don't bring me to Paul's writing first Corinthians the seventh chapter, because I'm going to show I don't know if I'm going to have time to do or not. But I can show you some things that Paul wrote. And he said, I think I got the spirit. I said, oh boy, what you doing? Thank you, you know. <laughs> And then he read, then he said another thing. He said, That's not that's not the Lord commanding, that's me talking. I said, okay, Paul, goodbye. I know when to tell Paul bye-bye, and I know when to pick him up again. You better learn how to tell Paul bye-bye and pick him up again when it's time to pick him up. I that's in the word. Paul said that. He thank you, God. The spirit. And he said, that's not me. It's not the law talking. It's not God's commandment. That's, that's me talking. I, I, Paul, I, I want the commandments of who? The I want the commandments of the law. Oh, come give me no, nothing smooth to keep me in trouble with Paul, the law. Paul was also a man too, so. Yeah. So that's why we need Jesus. Man. Jesus was a man, man. But Jesus came as a man to follow what his father wanted. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. I know when Paul followed Christ, and I know when he jumped ship. I got the word. So you need a man. Yeah. That's what man so what we're, what we're going to do here? We're going to stay with who? The man or the Lord? The Lord. Which one are you going to stay with, Don? The Lord. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a man. He's going to stay with the Lord. Uh, guess what? I'm going to make the same decision he made. I'm not gone with your feelings in motion. What didn't happen in your marriage? I'm gone with the word. To get you delivered. To get you free. So you can get the blessings of God upon your marriage. Oh, it's on today. All right, now they went with Moses. That's how Jesus is going to straighten them out about that Moses right. Now, if Moses right had to be straightened out, don't you think Paul right? If he says some stuff that ain't lined right up, he needs to be straightened out. How many preachers do that? There ain't too many preachers I've seen do straighten Paul. Some of Paul right now. With the word. That's all we can straighten it out. You can't straighten out another preacher out giving you a couple of little scriptures and, and some stuff that ain't right. You have to straighten it out with the word. word. You got to straighten that preacher out with the word. Well, I appreciate you coming up above my text is here, 777-03-1375, East Lucas. Thank you. And that's what you Lord. Lord, have mercy. Look at that age line. Now, Jesus didn't answer them now. Oh, you could have asked them with them, the scribes and Pharisees. She, and he said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffer you to put away your wife. Because of what? He went according to their heart. I don't go to your heart over here. No more. No more, no more, no more, no more, no more. Feelings and emotions. And my new song. But from the beginning, it was not so. It, from the what? God. You know, some people that get mad, it was here, here, here was some people that want to run a game with God. Some people, when they get married, oh, God didn't give me that one. So they put down there, kick that to the side, and then go get them another one. Oh, God didn't give me that one. Kick that to the side. Because that didn't work out too good in the kitchen. got too hot. They didn't know how to, how to run the kitchen. When they get too hot in the kitchen, go find a little place to pray and shut your mouth. As God, Lord, my, I'm losing it here. My feelings and emotion, I got, I want to tell him something. Mm -hmm. what? Tell him something. I want to tell him something, Lord. You were out there me before I blow it. What's wrong with that prayer? None. That's a lot of prayer. Huh? Side of me. I 
I saw what you gave me into my hand. My hand. I took it. I had a, 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 a paper. I had, I had a, one of them napkins. I took that thing and squeezed them. I said, you, Lord, you delivered me. Now, he come laying on my arm. That's a wall's knot. You know what a wall's do? You like it's sting. You like to sting, yeah. I didn't even get a sting from the one Friday. Today is what? Sunday. Still didn't get a sting. Can God protect you? Yes, he can. I'm trying to say something here. God can protect you. If you want to look at it on Facebook, you can go back on Facebook. It's going to be on YouTube. The walls is on my arm. Now, you didn't see it because I wasn't in the camera Friday. I'm just taking it back. To God, you power. Yes, Lord. I think I'm going somewhere. Go. God is a protector. He's a shield. He's a buckler. Yes, He's a strong tower. Yes, Lord, have mercy, God. He's a refuge. Yes, Lord. He's a very present help in a time of what? Trouble. trouble. I was in trouble. I was in trouble. I had a walls. Thank you, Lord. Walter man. But he got strong. Uh, get a little hand clap for you here. I said, God's an awesome God. Now he's on the floor and he's out of here. I've stepped on him. Uh, so, and they heard, he said, Moses did that for the heart of your heart. So, a lot of times people go along with people's emotion and how they feel and what the person did. Them. I ain't doing that. What God said, do. That's the word. That's what I'm finding out what the word says. He said, forgive and to love. Now, you can't do that. You can't, you can't do that. So you're going to need a power greater than yourself to do that. You're going to need the Lord. I don't ever take, make people believe, to even from the time I started ministering, and even till today, I don't make people believe that you can do this without the Lord. Never did. So I ain't going to start making you think you can do it now, because you can't. That's why you need Jesus. That's why you need what? That's why you need Jesus. You can't do it. Uh, look at my turn. And I said to you, whosoever shall put away his wife, oh, oh, except it be for fornication, what fornication is. All uh, right, so if I look at that night, that's uh, 19 and 9, it's going to be sexual immorality. Your partner has to be unfaithful. That's the only reason why Jesus gives a written of divorce. If the person is unfaithful. There is no other way I've seen in the word of God that gives you that right to be divorced. But only being unfaithful. Now, let's take this thing a little further. Even in that, can you forgive that person? You can. Yeah. You rise as a kid. If you want to stay with the person, you can forgive. But you don't need someone? Jesus. You can't do that. You're going to need. Because the devil going to play the DVD. You know what she did. You know what she said. And he got to run that thing until you get tired of hearing that and get vexed and go to the judge for the divorce. You're going to need some Jesus. He or she is in their right to do that, right? Huh? He or she. You say what? He in their right to do that. Like if somebody, for the cause of fornication, they have the right to put them away. The right yeah, I'll give you both sides. Okay, so, so, I mean, so. I, I hear what I'm saying. Even if you take them back, you can still make that decision. This ain't going to work. I thought it would. Oh, no. I, I don't think that's fair. Like, if you forgive them and you decide to keep them. Well, they're still doing it now. Well, that's another horn to look at. That, that's just they're still doing it. Right. Because they're never going to play the DVD system. He ain't going to leave you alone. Now, the person repent. And on good, it, it's not done no more. Why would you want to get rid of them? I don't see no reason to get rid of them because they ain't done it no more. 
Now, this should have done it. You should have that right. Because the devil's going to bring you up all the, you, you know. He going to deal with you like that. Come on, y'all lying about the devil because you got an adversary. And he going he to want you to do things contrary to what the Lord said to do. I'll be praying for my, I got a, oh, I got some Bible that this morning on uh, 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 principle. Oh, I'm going to bring that message out on principle. You talking about some powerful stuff. Ooh, it's going to be off the chain. Pastor, you know, they know what you were saying. I mean, if you do, do it one time, then you, you know when you stop doing it. Yeah. Well, don't go with your feelings, but don't go with your what? We talked about the feelings. That's what I'm saying. So, most people want to come back one time. Yeah, don't go with your feelings. Go with the word. The word says forgive them and forget. Now, you can't forget without who? Come on, brother. Don't take it off, brother. Yeah, well, that's why we take the word to change the way you think. How, how you how you think is going to change with the word. All right, there's another scripture that says renew your mind. Once your mind is renewed by the way you think, you won't think like that anymore. Because the word can renew it. It can change the way you think. That's a power of word. That's what Brother Marvin dealt with, tried the power of word. So the power of the word of God can change the way you think. It changed me. If the word can change me, this is what I look at it. As if you want to be changed, it can change anybody. But you have to allow the word to do that. Faith come by what? What you got to uh, uh, tell me? Oh, okay. Y'all heard that, Tim? Nine years old? Appreciate it. I'm, I'm right about the age, because sometimes I'm behind. Is it nine or eight? Nine. Nine? Okay, well, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on target. Thank you, Lord. Let Tim said it, heaven and earth, but his word ain't gone. Nowhere. His word ain't gone nowhere. Your word is going to go somewhere. It ain't going to be. Hey, you can put it in a glass and you can't hold no water. But you take that same word that God spoke, that glass and hold it. Because it ain't going nowhere. My word, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm through with my words, teaching y'all over here on how you feel. I don't want to know how you feel. What the word say? Oh, what you think? I don't know. If you think it like Jesus, I'm going to know. Mm How -hmm. I'm going to know if you think it like Jesus thinks. Right. I got the word. Yeah, and the Jews say they ain't going to go nowhere. You got something, sister? See, seems like you, you got some air up and you're getting ready to say something. Um, no, I'm fine. Huh? No, you good? I'm straight. All right. You need prayer? Well, no, because I don't have to forgive nobody right now. So. You have to forgive nobody? Not, not as far as fornication. You oh, okay. So have everything good there on, on your home front? Yeah, if I'm single. Well, praise the Lord. So we got we got some message for the singer, too, if you hang around. Uh, man, I don't know if I may even get to that all of it. But we dealt with some of the singers. Amen. We dealt with some of the singers. Amen. It's better to get getting married. Uh, he said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, some of you to put away and then your wine, for the uh, beginning it was not so. Uh, it wasn't so. Moses said that because your, your heart is hard. And Herman ain't going to tell y'all this stuff no more. No more. Are you sure? Now he And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wine, except it be for provocation, shall marry another committed what? That's, that's strong stuff, sir. If you've done it, 
because y'all can't get along? He said, you couldn't commit an adultery. I said, oh, that's tough. That's tough to meet that. You got to treat this a while. How are people going to follow their teaching? There's a problem with teaching either. And when Jesus talked about marriage, and who shall marry her which is put away, do commit adultery. So whoever marry her is going to commit adultery. Now watch what the apostles say about this, because that's some strong stuff. What the, he teaching the apostles here. And watch what the apostles say about it. He decided that he ain't uh, under him. If, if, if that's the case, Lord, that's the case of the man be so with his wife and not do the word. Hey, good man, Lord. Oh, that try to stop that you gave us. I don't know. I, I, what did my feet and emotion get in the way? You gonna need some Jesus. Get you some Holy Ghost. Get you some power. To carry this out. Because you can't do it. Now what happened, Lord? Now, watch what Jesus Christ answered the apostle. He said to them, I mean, to all of them, oh, all men can, can receive this saying. He said, Not all men can receive this saying now. Say that to whom it is given. Now, he's going to deal with the unit. And you're going to see this unit, there's three different types of unit. Was Paul a unit? <coughs> Paul was a unit. He ain't had no why. I, lied, I, I wish y'all could be like me. But, you know, since he came, it's better to marry than to burn. Well, when you get to marry, get married, do you still burn? Oh, so, so I'm going to look at that right. You still burn. So that tells me you don't know how to deal with your flesh. You don't know how to put your flesh under subjection, subjection preacher. Our sister just got saved. They got no, she ain't got no church clothes. She ain't got no church clothes. Come as you are. You know, that's true. Tell her she gets saved. Then she become a new creature in Christ. All things that begin to pass away. And behold, all things become new. Now here's what James said. It says, we're carried away by our own lust and enticing and bringing forth sin after sin is finished, bring forth death as a process. All right, so I can have the lust for spirit jump on me behind the sister, praying drunk. Guess what I do with it? Pray, see it, pray again. I pray inside and whip them spirits. Because there's a spirit of lust to be on that sister. You can't see them spirits. You better know how to deal with them. You better know how to deal with them. Deal with them. Better know how to deal with them spirits, preacher. Uh, all the headlights is out on bright, some of them half mass, and them devils are jumping. Now you call them, watch out, preacher. Well, man, something. Lord, I'm He said, all, all can I do, all can receive this. Now we're going to get in the unit. But there are some unit which were. So born from their mother's womb. So some of them is born as a unit. A unit is a person that don't have a desire for a, a, another lady. There are 144,000. Are they units? Yeah, yeah, you better go read about it. They're units. They ain't never got married. They're virgins. And they followed Jesus Christ wherever he were. Now you had a lot of units, but God took 12,000 out of each tribe. So you take 12 times 12 is what? That's 144,000. If you multiply 12 times 12 is 144,000. So the Lord took 12,000 out of each tribe and made them follow after Jesus. They went, didn't have no wife, didn't have to report. They had to report. They had to report so they can give us free to go and follow Jesus. But there are some units that man which are, are so born it was born that way from the mother's womb. And there are some units which were made unit of men. So some of them are made unit of men. In other words, 
they, they might be in a service. They might be uh, somewhere uh, fighting a war or something. And some of them make a career out of, out of the service. They don't get married. Some of them don't get married. They spend all the time in the service. They don't even get married. After me, they did that. That was, that was their choice. They cho chose that. And they, they'll be units which made themselves units for the kingdom of heaven. So some of them made units at the kingdom of heaven. I think that's what happened to Paul. He made himself a unit. I don't think he was born that way. I believe he made himself a unit for the kingdom of God. <laughs> he made himself that way. But in 144,000, he was born like that. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Is it you able to receive it, I'm saying, teaching you? That's what I need to receive. I'm able to what? I'm able to receive this teaching. That's why I can teach it to you. Because I'm able to receive it. I'll say what Jesus said. I think like he thought. I want to live like you want me to live. And I can't do it without. What you got with that, brother? If you decide to what? Get married, you can get married before you go into the army if you decide to do that. Yeah. That's your choice, Lily. You can do that. So you have a choice. <coughs> and you gotta give you a choice. And that's good for Timothy. Give you a choice. And you want one, you get you one. Before you go in. And if you don't want one, you don't have to get none before you go in. It can work either way. He can also buy it. He can give, give me a shawl. That's good enough, Terry. Good enough. Yeah. That's good. You sure can. All right. Let's, let's get another. Let's go to uh, Malachi uh, 2 and 13 at page 1130. And then page 1130. Page 1130. Boy, I, I got some more groceries. I got some more groceries on this this morning. But I, I ain't no way I'm going to finish it. Oh, no. I, I dealt with marriage before, but I got more knowledge in marriage. When I first dealt with it, I ain't had as much knowledge as I got now. So here's the thing about God. The more you study, the more you get it. The less you study, the less you don't have. The less you don't have. Zero times zero. Zero. Zero times pi. Zero. Zero divided by pi. I, I'm good on my mat. When it comes to zero, you're going to end up with zero. The more you work, the more money you got. The less you work, the less money you got. Hey, you got right, no, sir. You're right. Same thing. Some people think you're getting more than nothing. You don't get more than nothing. You're going to end up with nothing. You only just end up with a bunch of sand you're going to get. But if you're doing a bit extra, you end up with no money. Now, that's some people can't work. I understand that. They ain't the ones I'm talking about. I'm talking about the one that can work and don't want to work. Lord, have mercy, cheap. Let me get back over here, Lord, over there, no. Amen. Let's call Malachi, amen, 2 and 13. Malachi, amen, 2 and 13, page 1130. And this have you done again according to, uh, concerning the altar of the Lord with what? So they up there crying. They up there crying to the Lord. Well, watch what the Lord did with when the Lord get through it, then after you get through crying. So you can be crying about your little problems. All your little things you go through in marriage. You can be weeping and crying, calling folks and crying on the phone. They crying with you. And y'all feeling most running everywhere. Y'all feel it more the way? It's off the hook. <laughs> with weeping and with crying out so much that he regarded not the offering anymore. I don't even want to, I don't want y'all offering. Y'all been crying on my altar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been thinking with Jesus just as a kid. Y'all been crying on my altar. 
I don't want nothing from y'all no more. Why? You don't see why? Because look what they did with them why? They call somebody. Call it somebody. Lord, have that regard of them. Uh, uh, Lord, have all of them more and receive it with good with all at your hand. I don't even want your offer. Oh, 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 oh. You got to say that something. Uh, well, that's God. God bless you. You have to straighten them up. Hey, Amen. You come up there crying on my altar. You, you go straighten up with your wife. With your who? My wife. 14 5. Yet you say, wherefore, because the Lord had been witness. Who, who, who your witness? God is. <laughs> He's watching you. God watching you. In your marriage, we got to deal with it. Because God is dealing with it. The Lord has been witness between thee and thy wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. So I had to look at the word treacherously to find out the meaning. And here's what it came up with. It said deceit as one of them. Cheating as another one. The cheat. They think they're working too good. They got some on the side. Betrayal. Golly. Trust. They don't vote to trust. Yeah, you don't even trust you no more. Traitor. Lord, have mercy. They're, they're a traitor. They went against the marriage. God tell them against all that. I'm watching you. I should have you handling your mate. I you handling your wife. You love that much. Is that also for the wives too? Yeah, because she can do some cheating too. Uh, you know it works for both for the man as well as the woman. We ain't leaving nobody out now. Oh, we don't leave nobody out. We try to get both sides. Yet, is she thy company? And the wife of thy company? She the what? I come I can talk about marriage. Well, I can talk about marriage because I've only been married 51 years. Some of y'all ain't even been here that long. And everything in my marriage ain't work. Peaches and cream. Ain't no two people going to agree. That's why you need some Jesus. That's why you need some word. That's why you need some Holy Ghost to hit in that marriage. Lord, have mercy to you. 15 5. And did not he make one, yet he had he uh, the residue of the Spirit, wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. What kind of seed you looking for? See, he get a godly seed from, from marriage. Two people living together become a godly seed. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. You need to check your spirit out. I want to check your flesh out. Your flesh out. <laughs> your flesh, your flesh out. I don't care. I want me another one. Check your spirit out. And let nothing dare trust me against the wife of his youth. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. Play fat. Play the game foul. Forgive and love. And keep on going in the marriage. 65. For the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hates putting away. What putting away is? Divorce. Did you catch that, daughter? Hello? You can catch it. Putting away means a divorce. What kind? Divorce. We call it divorce today. What we call it today? Divorce. That's putting it away. God what? He loved it. Hate it. He what? Hate it. He hated it. I thought it occurred. I thought it pumped out a little bit. Now nah, he said he hate that. So I gotta hate what God hate and love what God love. I don't know you, I'm so loud. I'm so loud to the Lord now, not to the people. I am so loud to God. You can't buy me. 
I'm not a Holland. You can't fire me because you didn't hire me. Who hired me? The Lord. Lord, did he pay for me with his blood? So I don't want myself no more. Against his wife is you for the Lord. Amen. The God of Israel said he had hate putting away from one covered violence with his garment. Uh, said the Lord of hosts, therefore, take heed to your spirit. I come here to see your flesh. Amen. Good go in that flesh. They're fornicating and for, uh, uh, adultery for all kinds of sin. 17 verse them behind me. It ain't to your flesh, it's to your spirit. Get your spirit right with God. And dare not trust me. I don't want you to do this in your spirit. 17 by. You have heard of our uh, Lord, how much it? We have uh, walked where the Lord <laughs> with our word. We're weird with our word. You know, folks say a lot of stuff in their mouth. And they'll be never weary God because they're not following his instruction and what to do concerning marriage. They're weary God. Say a lot of stuff with their mouth. Yet you say, wherein have we weary him? When you say everyone that doeth evil is good. Oh, uh, you saying everybody that's going against me is good. How many people do that today? A lot of preachers do that. And preach that you believe in you good and you evil for you're a wicked person. You don't tell you about your wickedness, because that way you want uh, tell me about my wickedness so I can change. Don't understand wickedness. Give me the word. When I disobey the word, I become wicked. When I obey the word, I become righteous and holy. So give me the word so I can say like that. Don't give me nothing smooth. Make me feel good in the flesh. Give me something that make me feel good in the spirit. You're going to feel good somewhere. You're going to either feel good in the spirit or your flesh. But your flesh is going to take you to hell. But your spirit, amen, if you feel good in the spirit of God, it will take you to heaven. Ain't that somebody's work? Amen. Bless God. Even in the good in the sight of the Lord, uh, and he delighted in them. God does not delight in wrongdoing. Or where is God of the judgment? God will judge these signs. I uh, know. Come with me. I'm glad you have it. Come with me. Hebrews 13 and 4. Page 1439. We got some, some words back there now. And he's going to judge. And it's in the New Testament. Oh, ain't that something? The people said, man, thank you. They say it's just old. No, we deal with both over here. Old and new. Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews 13 and 4. Marriage is honorable and all. And the bed and the fire, but the whole market of adultery, God will what? Judge. I wonder why he don't give it to man to judge. Uh, he ain't going to judge it right. He is the judge. He going to judge it what? He going to judge it right, but not. Man may not judge his right. Because he might be doing some stuff against God himself. He, he might have he might have had about he got he might have some lovers on the side. So you can't judge nothing. But God said, I'm a judge. As he Hebrew, Hebrews 13 and 4. Now, marriage in the bed and the foul. So when you're having sex in the bed with your mate. Is undefiled is holy. God made your bed holy with His word. He made your bed holy with what? With His word. Your bed is holy if you matter. If you ain't matter, that's the flip side of it. You say it, shine it up. It ain't holy. It's defiled. Your bed is. My God. Where that preacher come from? Bumma takes his up 777 03 1375 Eastern Bank. All right, let's get, let's get another one. Lord, how much? Let's go to page 1389. Page 1389. Page 1389. And we're going to look at Galatians, the fifth chapter, and what Paul said about that. What happened to the grace message here? 
We, we, we give you everything, Paul, especially line up with the word. Now watch this one, line up with the word. Uh, yeah, I'm running with Paul right now. Amen. Galatians 5th chapter. Uh, Lord, how do I say it? Uh, 19 verse. Now the works of the flesh are manifested with your deeds, adultery, fornication, and cleanliness of the assembly. So that's the works of the flesh when you commit an adultery. Or uh, the Lewis sex. Men with men, women with women. As Lewis says. That's when you uh, two men married and their old flesh all messed up. Two women living together and their flesh all messed up. And then with God joining together. That's a devil joining that together. You better find out who that is. Huh? The fifth chapter. The 19th verse. So anytime you're doing this, you're in the flesh. Oh, you're going make it fun. And that's what's going to happen to you at the end. That's going to be the end. You might be feeling good in your flesh now. 25. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, barrenness, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, hearsays, envy, murdering, drunkenness, revenant, and such like, which I tell you before. I've told you this before. You find it also in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, is what Paul said, I, I've told you before. He told the Corinthian church, he told the Ephesian church, you know, uh, as the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians, he told them, he said, I've told you I've been before. That they that do such things shall not, would not mean. You ain't going to inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot inherit God's kingdom operating in the flesh. It's all about the spirit. That's why the Lord spoke in Malachi. Take heed to your spirit. Take heed to your spirit. So you got the right spirit or not. Now the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, meekness, temperance, against us. Yeah, no, you're not breaking the law as long as you operate in the spirit. You break the law when you operate in the flesh. That's why you need to be taught. You need to be taught both, both of them. Both the spirit and the flesh. Once you taught the spirit and the flesh, then you can understand why you're having problems. Because you're not all spirit. You got flesh on you. And it's don't want to do wrong. And it's don't want to feel good. I know when I would drink alcohol, I feel good. And as I got through, I felt bad. I wonder why. I had a hangover. Y'all know the hangover is? That devil didn't tell me the hangover was coming. He just made me feel good in the flesh. And then I started feeling bad in the flesh. Uh, the flesh is good. Make me feel good. You smoke them cigarettes? Let's just on that. Let's go a little bit smoking. You smoke them cigarettes, preacher? And, and you're going to preach to people about salvation. You can't get saved from all. <laughs> a little paper with some stuff in it. Come out the ground? You're supposed to have power over that ground. And they think come out the ground. You smoke it, coughing everywhere. Lord, have mercy, cheap. You need to quit it. Go get yourself saved so you can have somebody else get saved off of them nicotine. That ain't nothing but the devil. Make your old flesh feel good. And then one thing about it, when you eat, you got to have another cigarette. It suck up all the nicotine. I said the food to suck up all the nicotine. Now you got to light up again. And now your lungs all hit up. Because you put that jack down in your lawn. If God wants you to smoke, you put a chimney on your head, not in your nose. Jesus is the one that's going to help you to overcome these things. Jesus is the one that's going to help you with your marriage. 
Jesus is going to help you with your emotions, your feelings running everywhere. Amen. Until you got your little feelings and emotions hurt. I say, Jesus will help you to obey the word of God. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Get a lot of that stuff over here. I say, Jesus. I say, Jesus is going to do it by you. But you can't do it. Uh oh, we got, we got to close off here. Let's go to 1 Peter 3 and 7. We got to close here. I'm uh, coming to page 1447. Amen. Page 1447. Our time and color with, we're going to have to do a part two. Amen. 14 and then 47. Page 14 and then 47. That's 1 Peter 3 and 7. Oh, it's going to be off the chain. Amen. 1 Peter, there's Peter talking to that. Uh, the third chapter, I go along with Peter. Likewise, ye husband, well, with them according to what? Knowledge. knowledge. You've got to have knowledge of a lady. Don't try to blow your brain apart now. Get you some knowledge from where? From the word. He said, you got to dwell with them according to some knowledge. You have to have knowledge to dwell with a wife. Give an honor unto the wife, as unto the weak of vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that you, your pride be not hindered. All right, so what can hinder my pride? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the word of God what can hinder your pride with your wife. Lord, have mercy on you. God ain't going to hear you. God ain't going to hear you. I don't know God you praying. This can hinder your pride. What you got to let them? Uh, isn't it 1 Peter 14, 37? At prayer, 14, 47. 14, 47. 1 Peter, the third chapter. We just got to read the seventh verse. We can hinder your pride. We're going to find that out. Lord, have mercy. Father be ye of oh, oh, one man having compassion one of another, love it. Let's see. Is that where I need to be, Lord? I have been in this. Being there together great. Okay, but then another verb. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you what hinders, but we ain't gonna have time to go find out. But the, what hinders your pride is bitterness. When you're bitter against your wife, how did you get bitter? Because of something she did. I'm saying. Gee. Can it work for the wife also? She can get bitter too. It work both ways. The wife can get bitter towards you because something you said, something you did, now she did. And God ain't gonna hear her cry. Uh, Father, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courtesy. Oh, Lord, help me to love, Lord. Help me to love my wife. Remember, we can't do that. Amen. You're going to need your help. Amen. To help me. Amen. To love. Not letting evil for evil, reverend for reverend, but controversy and blessing, knowing that or without a call that she should uh, inherit blessing. So if I bless my wife, and that's what I do when she gets ready to go to work, I say, God bless you, sweetie. I say, the best of the Lord will take you. I say, I hope that you prosper. Be in good health. Even as your soul prosper. And I tell you. I don't tell you all the time. Because sometimes I'm sleeping. But when I can tell her, that's what I tell her. Why? Because I can inherit a blessing if I give a blessing. I hope you're being there. You read what you want? So. You don't read what you sow. With your mouth. So watch what you say to your wife. Husband, why? Watch you, what you say with your mouth to your husband. Not to let feelings hurt. Ten five. For he that he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his song from what? From evil. <laughs> As your tongue, watch your tongue now. Yeah, she can push your button. And his lip that they speak no gal. Watch your lips. Watch your tongue. Dwell with the call of knowledge. Get you some knowledge. What to say, tongue? Lord, that's the Jesus. 
And somebody say, well, they're always acting like that. Well, you said it with your mouth. That's why you keep acting like that. Speak them blind. Be not as though they were. If you wanted to change, you got to change it with your mouth. I say you wanted to change. I say you have what Jesus Christ and you have what you say. You got to be careful to serve that power. Amen. The scripture says that uh, he was cast out devil by Bezalel, the prison of the devil. He said they won't be forgiven in this life or the next because they spoke against the Holy Spirit. He said you can say something about me, but you say something about God's Spirit, you'll never be forgiven. Well, somebody said you're going to be forgiven of all your sin. That ain't true. Not against the Holy Spirit, you ain't going to be forgiven. Not in this life. Not in the next. You better go get you some knowledge. How to handle God's spirit. How to handle your mate. And y'all be praying for it. Because I want to deal with one on how to handle your money. We got to what? Deal with it. Don't y'all have some money? Yeah, y'all got some money. You going to have to learn how to deal with it. See, I'll be praying for me. Because we ain't through dealing with it. We got to deal with some money. Uh oh we got that word. Good man, I'm trying to get a lot of hands out for you here. I said, God is an awesome God. We got to finish. Amen. We got to close it out. Lord, Lord, your word said. Your word said. One, two or three. One, two or three. Touching the green. Touching the green. Asking anything. Asking anything. In your name. In your name. You said you'd do it. You said you'd do it. Lord, Lord, your word said. Your word said. And so we bound on earth. We bound on earth. Be bound in heaven. Be bound in heaven. And so we loose on earth. Where we loose on earth. We loose in heaven. We loose in heaven.